Hello and good day, everyone. I am Attorney John Destacamento, and this is the fourth and final part of my lecture series in copy reading and headline writing. Specifically, this part. In this part, we'll be talking about headline writing or how to become an effective headline writer. Okay. So first things first, I think um, we need to have a quick review on the rules on um, headline writing before delving into the uh, nitty gritty work involved in headline writing. Okay, so here are some of the rules in writing effective headlines. First, um, many students would ask, um, sir, how many words are there supposed to be in 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 a headline? And some sources would say it should not be more than eight or it should not be more than nine, seven, or that it should be very, very short. But really in my 11 years of working in a newspaper, in a newspaper, I can say that you cannot really limit the number of words in a particular headline. For me, the better question to ask is whether your headline was able to tell completely the reader what the story is all about. For me, that should be the primary consideration in writing the headline, whether such headline tells the reader what the story is all about. Your headline must be able to encapsulate um, the idea expressed in the lead, that is to say in the summary lead, and it's not much about whether it's eight or less because really, based on experience, there are some stories that you cannot just help it, but uh, their headline would really exceed eight words. So for me, there's really no exact number of words as to how many words should should be in a headline. For me, the 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 primordial consideration is whether your headline is able to tell the story in the shortest but most complete way possible or in the shortest but complete way possible. So that should be the consideration. Now, headlines, since we're talking here about um, uh, writing headlines for newspaper. So the way that we do it is that the format in writing our headlines in newspaper is um, they are usually written in down style format. So when we say that a headline is written in down style format, that simply means that um, only the first letter of the first word in the headline is capitalized and all other words in that headline is set in lower case except proper nouns. Of course, later on, as we discuss the types of headlines, where we discuss kickers and hammers, we're going to introduce to you some formats other than down style. Now, in headline writing, all numbers must be set in figures. We already discussed this in the previous lecture that in headline writing, as far as copy reading and headline writing is concerned, the context here is where copy reading a newspaper article and we're making a headline within the context of print journalism. So because we are making a headline for the newspaper and we know that a newspaper does not have unlimited space. So it is very, uh, the, the, the space provided for the headline can be limited. And so we want to maximize that little space that we have by setting the numbers in figures. So all numbers, in the headline must appear in figures. Now, in the headline also, the general rule, at least for English, is that you, you as much as possible, omit articles, a, an, or the. Or in Filipino, you may omit isang. So instead of isang bata, nalunod, patay. So you just say bata, nalunod, patay. You don't say isang. You don't say a car overturns killing five people, but you just say car overturns, kills five people. So those are um, those are some of the uh, rules. And in addition to that, instead of using and, 
we use comma. So instead of using and or at in Filipino, we use comma for the headline consistent with the principle in headline writing of saving space. And also what else? Instead of using double quotation marks, for example, there are some words in the headline that need to be enclosed in quotation marks, maybe because these are words that suggest that they are allegations, they are claims, they are controversial uh, words. And so you have to put them in quotation marks just to uh, tell the reader that these are actually allegations are and are not uh, universally accepted as facts. And so should you use quotation marks in the headlines, then you have to use single quotation marks only. Again, because we want to ma maximize space. Um, you may, as a general rule, use acronyms. If the acronyms are acronyms if these acronyms are popular meaning to say your readers okay your readers know these acronyms even if you don't uh, spell them out so you always when you when you write your headlines always think of the welfare of your readers um the headline must deliver the story right away but there are some words that may not be understandable so acronyms that may not be uh universally known by your reader so if your readers don't know this particular acronym, then you might just as well use uh, a generic word for that acronym. So say, for example, um, instead of using SNVHO in the headline, the acronym for Santo Nino Village Homeowners Association. So since your readers may not know what SNVHO actually stands for, then even if it's if, if it's an acronym, the fact that it is uh, not popular among all your readers um, simply means that you should not use that in your headline because it's not easily understood. The readers may not easily grasp the 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 meaning of that particular um headline. So, I mean acronym. So instead of H N V H O, you might as well just use um homeowners group or homeowners org or you might you can simply say homeowners uh, as a representation of the um of the snvho in your headline so that is if the uh, acronym is not popular but for deped dilg dnr these are very common pagasa uh, like these are very common acronyms so you may uh, use them uh, in your headline uh, right away uh, same rule applies to generic uh, to to the names of persons, places, and things. If these names of persons, places, and things are, uh, if these persons, places, or things are quite well known to your readers, then you might you may just mention them directly in your headline. Otherwise, just use their generic words. So instead of Juan de la Cruz, you might just use uh, Mangingisda. Um, Mangingisda. Um, tinamaan ng kidlat patay. So you don't say de la Cruz tinamaan ng kidlat patay because Juan de la Cruz there is not that prominent as a person. So now let's go to the types of headlines. These are the types of headlines that we often see being used in newspaper settings. So the first is simple headline or what I say ordinary yung ulo. The second is kicker headline or ulong may kicker. The third is a hammer headline or ulong may hammer. And the fourth type of headline is a quotation headline. Now, let me talk about simple headline or ordinaryong ulo first. It is, a, it is called simple or ordinaryong ulo because the headline, states the, uh, the headline states the main idea in just one go. There are no kickers. There are no hammers. Um, you all you see is the ordinary headline. This is the most common type of headline that you see being used in newspapers and even in online journalism. So an example would be Lapu-Lapu kills Magellan in Battle of Mactan. So it's a simple or ordinary headline because the headline states is stated in just one go, in just one uh, utterance. Okay, Magellan killed by Lapu-Lapu in Battle of Mactan. BBM poised to win presidency. Robin Padilla leads senatorial race. Again, the idea is expressed in just one go. Filipino, Binata, Minartilio, Patay. Sunog, Tumupok ng 20 Kabahayan sa Cebu City, Semicolon, for Sugatan. Bus, Sumalpok sa Pader, 
semicolon, tatlo patay, kama, sampu sugatan. BBM nangunguna ng 10M, meaning 10 million boto, versus Lenny. So they're called simple headline or ordinary yung ulo because they state the idea in the headline in just one go. There are no kickers. There are no hammers. Now, more about ordinary headline, but this one is applicable for English copy readers only. With English copy readers, uh, just like in, in writing our sentences, um, the headline for English, at least, uh, may either be in active voice, may be written in active voice or passive voice. So when we say that the headline is in active voice, the headline normally begins with a subject. And the subject here is the doer of the action. And that subject is followed by a verb that is usually in present tense. Um, it is in present tense even if the action already took place in the past. Followed by the direct object. Although in some instances, the direct, the direct object in an active voice headline may be omitted. And other modifiers, other supporting words that may make your headline more impactful or that will complete the thought in your headline. So again, the active voice format con uh, has this formula, subject, which is the doer of the action, plus verb in present tense, if the action already took place in the past plus direct object plus modifier. So example, Lapu-Lapu kills Magellan in Battle of Mactan. So this one is in active voice because the subject, Lapu-Lapu, is the one doing the action expressed in the verb. The action or the verb here is kills. And who, who kills Magellan? Uh, the answer is Lapu-Lapu. So therefore, the doer of the action is Lapu-Lapu, which is the subject of the sentence. And so, this particular headline is in active voice. In Battle of, of Mactan, that is what I call a modifier or some additional sen sentence that will complete the idea or complete the thought expressed in your headline. It gives your readers more information about what the headline is all about. Um, next example, Robin Padilla leads senatorial race. So here, the subject is Robin Padilla. And the verb is leads. Again, the, the subject, the, the verb here is in present tense, even though the um the action or the context of the story is already in the past. Uh the reason why we want to why why we why why we set in present tense the verb, even though the action already actually happened already based on its proper context, is that um the purpose, one of the purposes of the headline is to capture the attention of the readers and what better way to capture their attention in order to invite them into reading further into your story than to make them feel that this particular story is fresh or something that is new. So in order to achieve that, um, we will give them a verb that is in present tense. Okay, but of course, when you write the actual body of the news article, then you have to properly set it in its proper context, which is the action already took place in the past. And therefore, you have to use past tense for the verbs uh, in the body of your news article. Three Cebu grads, top left. Okay, so the subject there is three Cebu grads. Notice the number three is in figures. And Cebu grads, uh, instead of graduates, we use grads because that's a generally accepted um, um, uh, shortened form for graduates, especially for headline purposes. And then top, again, uh, this is where some copy readers um, would uh, fail. Um, in the headline, the number of subject, the number of the subject must agree with the number of the verb. I'm sorry, the number of the verb must agree with the, with the number of the subject. So that means that uh, plural subject takes plural verb, singular subjects take singular verbs. So you have there a subject, three Cebu grads, that's plural. So you have to also use the, flu, the, the plural form of the verb, which is top, uh, Plural form is the one without S. And again, uh, every time the copy reader makes a headline, he must be conscious of, of this rule. Because again, the headline is his or her first shot at impressing the judge. 
or impressing the reader for that matter. And if you have a faulty headline, a defective headline, just because the number of the verb does not agree with the number of subject, um, then it might be a very big um disappointment or it might it might send a wrong impression to the judge that maybe this particular person is not that you know skillful enough in, in headline writing and that might affect the result of the contest. Now aside from active there's also passive. So in active voice the focus is the subject which is the doer in the action of the action. In passive voice the subject here is no longer the doer of the action but the receiver of the action. So it is the thing person or place which receives the action the subject here receives the action rather than does the action so in a passive voice the format is subject which is the receiver plus the verb and the verb here is in past participle form followed by modifier so uh, the verb here is not in the past tense it is in past participle form why is it in past participle uh, participle form? Um, it is in past participle form because if you use the passive voice format for ordinary headlines, there is understood to be an is or are those uh, be verbs. Is or are after the subject. For, for example, Magellan killed by Lapu-Lapu in Battle of Mactan. Okay. There is understood to be an is after Magellan and before killed. So um, something like Magellan is killed by Lapu-Lapu in Battle of Mactan. And what comes after is, are, was, where in sentence construction? Diba it, it's the past participle form of the verb. However, as a rule, as a general rule in headline writing, we are allowed to omit is, are, was, where. Uh, from the headline for as long as it does not alter or it does not uh, make vague the delivery of the message, the message expressed by the headline. So when we say Magellan killed by Lapu-Lapu in Battle of Mactan, it doesn't really alter the delivery of the message. It does not, we are not bothered by how the message is delivered. It, it, it still uh, conveys the idea even if there is no is. So you just omit the is, so what is left is the past participle form of the verb. Now, I would like to emphasize this because um, there are some verbs that, do, uh, some verbs, especially the, um, specifically the irregular verbs, they, their past tense form is different from their past participle form. I have to emphasize that the, the tense of the verb here is past participle and not past tense, okay? Because, um, well, it's well and good if uh, the, the verb you use is a regular verb whose past tense and past participle tense is the same, such as killed, for example, because uh, the verb base there is kill, and then the past simple past tense form is killed, and then the past participle form is killed. But what about irregular verbs? Verbs whose past participle form is different from their simple past tense. For example, write. Their past tense is wrote. But their past participle is written. So if you miss and miss um, appreciate that it should be past tense, Maybe you will er erroneously use the word wrote, but really the word to use there in your headline is the past participle form, written. So um, autobiography written by Cebuano journalist. Okay, so it's written and not wrote. Again, because there's understood to be a verb is before the verb and after the subject. So another example here, BBM poised to win presidency. Actually, the complete Headline here is BBM is poised to win presidency. But again, is, are, was, where may be omitted where the headline will still be able to deliver the story, um, de deliver the idea, okay, completely. Mandawi mayor shot dead inside his home. So the complete headline there is Mandawi mayor is shot dead inside his home. But again, is our was where may be omitted. So what's left is Mandawe, um, is Mandawe, mayor shot dead inside his home. So 
those are some of the uh those are the two voices in writing our ordinary headline for english copy readers only but i think the better question to ask here is sir what is the better voice to use when we use uh when we write our uh our ordinary headline so is it active voice or passive voice the answer to that is actually it depends you have to decide which element in the story is more important is it the doer of the action or the receiver of the action because if the more important element to the story is the doer of the action meaning to say it's the most interesting it's the most important it's the most prominent part of the story the doer of the action then that's okay it's okay to use active voice format on the other hand if it's the receiver of the verb the receiver of the action that is more important than the doer of the action then you might as well use the passive voice and exactly uh, for example uh, in this particular example mandawi mayor shot dead inside his home um we don't know based, based on that headline we don't know who who did the shooting uh we just know that the receiver of the verb sh shoot or shot is mandawi mayor because this is passive so actually we can come up with a with a headline in active voice even if we use um the let's say for example if the if the person who who shoot or who shot the mayor was still un unidentified so we can actually come up with a with an active voice headline unidentified gunman shoots so it's present because it's active voice shoots mandawi city mayor dead in his house okay would uh, would would it have still been correct would it would it be correct yes that's co that's still correct um but um is it um is it the most appropriate type of headline to use no i don't think that's the most effective and appropriate headline um to to give to that particular story considering that the doer of the action the un the unidentified gunman is less important compared to the receiver of the action, the Mandawi City Mayor, uh, who was the one being shot. So therefore, in that particular that particular type of story, it should be, uh, we should use the passive voice. Hence, the more appropriate headline is Mandawi Mayor shot dead in his home. Okay. Now, for ordinary headlines, still for English, for future events. Okay. So earlier for past events we use present tense in the headline for active voice. But for future events, for English copy readers, for future events, we use the infinitive to. So we don't say Lenny will visit Cebu for Grand Rally next Monday. We say Lenny to visit Cebu. Duterte to lead third bridge opening right. So we say to lead and not will lead. We say Comelec to decide on disqualification case versus BBM next week. It's not Comelec will decide. So we just use the word to instead of will. So if the thrust, if the context of the news article as expressed in the lead is the action has yet to be done. So the headline must reflect that particular uh, that particular fact that the action is yet to be done. It should not be that the headline is already in the headline that action is already being done or had already been done um the action expressed in the lead must be reflected in the headline because after all your headline is just the skeleton of your lead now there are also what i call ver uh, verbless headlines for english and filipino these are still your ordinary and simple headlines, but iba earlier I told you that the main objective in writing the headline is to tell what the story is all about right up front. Like um, the headline must already tell your readers what happened in the story, what the story is all about. The most interesting and most important things in your story must be expressed in the headline. And because of that requirement, often we use verbs in our headline because verbs being action words they already tell the readers what exactly happened what exactly happened in the news 
but uh, not all headlines are actually not all headlines can actually have verbs so you can write headlines that don't have verbs but still consider them as effective headlines now make no mistake i am not talking here about label headlines label headlines are completely um are completely not allowed uh, in writing the headline because they don't tell you what really is the story all about label headlines are something that go label headlines are um, go something like this mm. fire in mandawe or or just a simple word fire okay or rape victim or um champion school okay so they are simply labels you are not actually delivering a story you are just stating a word or phrase that does not really express a complete thought or idea so these label headlines are not allowed but verbless headlines on the other hand are not your label headlines these are headlines that although not containing verbs, still nonetheless deliver the idea in the story. For example, in English, no Cebu grad in top 10 of bar 2022. So there's no verb there, but you are still able to tell to your readers that um, there was no Cebu grad in top 10 of bar 2022. You're still able to completely deliver to the reader what the story was all about. Or Lenny, a no-show in Ace Junjun Rally in Talisay. So there's no verb there. Okay, Kanang a no-show. It's just an idiomatic expression for being absent or for skipping or for not showing up during the rally. So you can actually use just uh, a verb like Lenny uh, skips Ace Junjun Rally in Talisay or Lenny absent in is Junjun Rally in Talisay, but you know, um, if if this is a contest, okay, this is a contest, so you want to impress the judge, so you would want to use words that are often used in headline writing, and for absences or for those officials skipping some ceremonies or rites, um, sometimes um the the newspaper would use the phrase a no show. So Lenny, a no-show in Jun Ace Junjun Rally in Talisay, no verb still, uh, but still it uh, delivers completely the thought or the idea in the in the story. Elections, generally peaceful. Again, there's no verb there, but it tells you what the story is all about already. For Filipino, mga estudyanteng Pinoy, kolelat sa agham at pagbasa. So there, there is no, there's really no verb, walang pandiwa, walang action. But still, you were able to deliver the story. BBM Sara nasa si bukas. Okay, no verb, walang pandiwa. Pero were, are you able to tell the story? Yes. Chris Aquino biyahing US para sa matagalang pagamutan. Again, there is no verb, but still the headline writer is still able to properly convey the message in the headline. Those are what you call your verbless headlines and they are also still perfectly okay, perfectly fine to use. Now, if we have simple or ordinary headline, we also have kicker headlines. So kicker headline contains two elements. First is it contains a kicker and second, it contains a simple headline which is your main headline. So the kicker is a related phrase or detail that is just taken from the details in the news story, news article. Maybe there are some more interesting details there uh, that have not been highlighted in your simple or ordinary headline that you want to highlight in the headline uh, in the form of a kicker. So you can use that as your kicker. So the rule here in writing your headline first is you in, in writing your kicker headline is first you must make your main headline first your simple headline as if you're only making a simple headline okay and then after that you then write the kicker so the way kicker is written is that it's it's always it's usually in all caps and underlined. So, giving you these examples. So, Lapu-Lapu kills Magellan in Battle of Mactan, and your kicker there is using his kampilan or sword. Or BBM poised to win presidency, 
And your kicker is with 12M or 12 million lead over Lenny. Robin Padilla leads a notorial race as he vows to bring action. That's your kicker. Your kicker is in Cebu City next week. And your main headline or simple headline, Duterte to lead third bridge opening rights. So you see, your kicker is really just additional information a uh, group of words that gives more or additional information to your simple headline or to your main headline. The main headline here is your simple headline under the kicker. So your main headline or simple headline must be able to stand on its own merits, even without the kicker. Okay, so your simple headline must be able to tell the idea expressed in the headline even without the kicker because the kicker is simply an additional in at some additional words based on um the information found in the news article okay so again when you when you write your kicker headline the first step is to first write your simple headline or ordinary headline and then the next is to Find some more additional details in the story that may not have been highlighted in your simple headline, then you make it as your kicker. Again, the kicker here is in all caps, but although it is in all caps, it must be written um, smaller than the simple headline or the main headline below it. So, for example, kicker headline for Filipino, binata minartilio patay. So, if the judge is only asking an ordinary or a simple headline or there are no specifications as to what type of headline you're going to use, then you just use binata minartilio patay is a perfect 10 over 10. But if the judge asks you for a kicker headline, asks a kicker headline, then you may want to add dahil sa selos. Okay, so binata minartilio patay, it can stand on its own. But if you add dahil sa selos, it does not really affect the idea expressed in your simple or ordinary headline. It just gives additional information. Maybe additional information um, that can further enhance the message in your headline. So actually, the reason why uh, kicker headlines are often used in a newspaper setup is because because of the limited space of, in the newspaper so if if the headline man good is to be written completely as a simple headline in itself because it's too long of a headline na um it might not be accommodated in the space allotted for it so that's why editors copy editors would resort to the use of a kicker headline Okay, sunog, tumupok ng 20 kabahayan sa Cebu City, apat sugatan. So your kicker could be, naiwang kandila, sinise. Or bus, sumalpok sa pader, tatlo patay, sampo sugatan. Sa Karkar City, Cebu. Yeah. And then another one, BBM, nangunguna ng 10M Boto versus Lenny. Karera sa pagkapangulo. So again, those this is kicker headline. Now, the next type of headline is what we call a hammer headline. And a hammer headline consists of two elements. The first element is the hammer, and the second element is the um, is a simple or ordinary headline under the hammer. So a hammer is usually a catchy phrase, usually two to four words over your simple or ordinary headline. So think when you when you're asked to make a hammer headline think um of yourself as a feature writer um you must be able to come up with a catchy word or phrase that encapsulates the idea expressed in your news article so the hammer here must be catchy it must be creative it must sum up the idea in the lead but do not repeat a word from the simple headline in the hammer and vice versa. Same rule. I forgot to mention this in the kicker. Same rule when, you, when you're when you asked to make a kicker headline. No word in the simple headline must be repeated in the kicker and vice versa. And same with hammer. No word in the simple headline must be repeated in your hammer. Uh, whenever I check um, headlines, I automatically give deductions or demerits to those if I see a word in the simple headline being repeated in the hammer because um, redundancy 
as a general rule is frowned upon in writing. So here are some examples of hammer headlines. Again, it consists of a catchy word or title or the hammer. And then under the hammer is the simple headline. And again, the simple headline must be able to stand on its own even if, meaning to say, when I say stand on its own, meaning to say it must be able to deliver the idea or the message of the story on its own even without the hammer or even without the kicker. So my hammer here is hometown hero. Lapu-Lapu kills Magellan in Battle of Mactan. So, sir, is that creative? I'm so sorry. I'm not that creative enough, but at least I use alliteration in this case. Um, alliteration because the two words, bo both words in my hammer starts with an H. The same consonant sound, H and H. Ha and ha. So, that's a hammer headline. Another example, Bayaning Magiting. Lapu-Lapu tinodas si Magellan sa labanan sa Mactan. So, take note that the hammer is written much larger and all caps compared to the simple or ordinary headline under it. Landslide victory, BBM poised to win presidency. Balik Palacio, Bongbong Marcos, nakatakdang iproklama bilang susunod na Pangulo. So, the ordinary headline, as you can see, is still written in down style format. And then the hammer is written all caps. And it's really, really um, bolded and uh, all caps. From actor to legislator, Robin Padilla leads senatorial race. Again, um, some wordplay here, actor, legislator, and some... Um, and uh, again, this is four words worth of hammer. And then the simple headline is Robin Padilla leads senatorial race. Actor noon, senador ngayon. Robin Padilla, number one sa bilangan ng boto sa karera pa Senado. Presi at Ciclex, Duterte to lead third bridge opening rights. Presi sa Ciclex, Duterte nakatakdang dumalo sa pagbubukas ng third bridge. So that's your hammer headline. The last type of headline is what we call a quotation headline. And it's called a quotation headline because it consists of, your headline here consists of the name of a source and the quote or a statement uttered by that source. So there's no need to quote the source in verbatim or word for word. So meaning to say you don't really have to quote the in your headline the exact words uttered by the speaker. It's okay that you do that you paraphrase it you word it for as long as the idea is still there it would still have been a quotation headline even if you do that so there's no need to put single quotation marks it's okay that you put the name of the speaker and then colon plus the plus the statement you don't have to write uh single quotation marks or worse double quotation marks um you don't have to enclose the statement in single quotation marks or double quotation marks because the fact that you put the speaker there, um, the speaker um, and a colon simply means that you're attributing that statement to that speaker already. And then what comes first, the quote or source? Okay, what that's that's a, that's a nice question. When writing quotation leads, sometimes, sometimes we see that the speaker is written first Sometimes also the speaker is written last or after the statement already. So the answer there on the question of what comes first, the quote or the source, it actually depends. Again, um, it's all about what is more important. So what is more important, the speaker or the, the statement? If the speaker is more important than the statement, then maybe... And you wish to emphasize that fact that uh, the speaker was prominent, then you may want to write the speaker first. But if what the speaker said is more important than the fact that who said that statement was that speaker, then it's okay to write the speaker last. So example of quotation headlines, BBM, colon, I don't need to attend debates or... I don't need to attend debates, debates, BBM said. So, um, I, I mean BBM. So, uh, regarding what I, what I said earlier about which 
which should come first, the quote or the source. So even if it's Bongbong Marcos, the president himself who is stating something or saying something, that doesn't really automatically give you the license to write Marcos first. Because it could be that what the president said is more important than that than the fact that he is the president. So for example, in if in one of the press conferences at Malacanang, uh, President Marcos announced that um, the Philippines is now the number one debtor in the World Bank. Okay, So which is more important there? The fact that the Philippines is already the number one debtor or the number one borrower of World Bank or the fact that, or, or Marcos as the speaker. So for me, what is important in that story, what's more important in the story is the, is the statement that Philippines is now the leading borrower of in, world, in the World Bank. So I would probably headline it this way. PH now number one WB or World Bank borrower or debtor. And then um, dash Marcos or BBM. So... Simply because, again, the statement of Marcos is more important than the fact that who uttered that statement is the president. Now, so here are some examples of quotation headline. I don't need to attend debates, BBM. Or it can be a combination of a simple or ordinary headline plus a, a quotation headline. So labor group slams board and then colon, 33 wage hike, not enough. Or if uh, the if you want to... If the speaker specifically addresses his statement to a particular person, such as this, Isko Toleni, colon, withdraw, okay? Or Rama on pandemic. You, you can use Isko Toleni if, uh, you can use to if the speaker is specifically addressing it to a particular person or to a particular organization or entity. Use, you use on, okay? Rama on pandemic, you use on, just to um just to contextualize it just to add more context to it meaning to say you are actually putting or you're you're actually um um giving more information or putting more context giving more context as to what rama is talking about so rama on pandemic we are free because if you just put rama colon we are free diba? it may be awkward. It does not really give us the context that Rama is talking about the pandemic. Okay? So those are... And by the way, since this is quotation headline, okay, look, uh, BBM, I don't need to attend debates. The, the point of view here is it's in first-person perspective. I ang atong gamiton, hindi po tayo gumagamit ng third person. We only use third person for simple or ordinary headlines as discussed earlier okay so so quotation headlines for filipino bbm di ko kailangan sumipot sa mga debate or di ko kailangan sumipot sa mga debate um dash bbm board pinatutsadahan ng labor group 33 wage hike di kasha isko kay leni withdraw rama sa pandemic Malaya na tayo. So again, it's a quotation headline because there is a speaker and there is a quote or statement. The quote or statement need not be uh, verbatim or word for word. Okay? So let's have a quick head right, headline writing exercise. So based on these leads in English and Filipino. So for English, the Supreme Court has ordered the Philippine Charity Sweepstakes Office to give 12.3 million to a lotto bettor who was denied of such jackpot price for nine years for have, having a partially burned ticket. So write an ordinary kicker, hammer, and quotation headline based on that particular lead. So you may um, pause or stop the video first right here and come up with your own headlines as asked. Or if you're a Filipino copy reader, Inuutos ng Supreme Court or SC sa Philippine Charity Sweepstakes Office na ibigay ang 12.3 milyong jackpot price ng isang residente ng Batangas 
na holder ng winning ticket sa Lotto 642 draw noong 2014 na bahagyang nasunog matapos planchahin. Again, when you write your headline, the headline must, rule number one, tell the reader what exactly the story is all about. The most interesting and the most important aspects of the news or the story must be mentioned on your headline. So let's try to see the suggested answers. So for ordinary headline or sim simple headline or ordinary yung ulo, so SC orders PCSO to give 12M jackpot to better despite burned ticket. Sir, that, that's quite a mouthful. That's lengthy already. But again, you have to tell your reader what's, what the story is all about. Um, sir, can we can we just uh, stop at better and not include despite burned ticket? For me, the, the phrase despite burned ticket must be included because that will give the reader uh, immediately the reason why the jackpot price had been withheld for the, for such a long time. So it really tells the reader completely what the what the headline or what the story is all about. Uh, for Filipino, PCSO, inutusang ibigay ang 12M jackpot sa mananaya kahit sunog ang ticket. Now, let's go to kicker headline. So, it's just the same ordinary headline, but you just add some additional information or some additional phrases lifted from the lifted from the story. So your kicker headline could be something like after nine-year court battle, that's your kicker, SC orders PCSO to give 12M jackpot to better despite burned ticket. Or for Filipino, matapos ang halos dekada. So that's your kicker. PCSO inutusang ibigay ang 12M jackpot sa mananaya kahit sunog ang ticket. For hammer headline, okay, long-awaited luck. SC orders PCSO to give 12M jackpot to better despite burn ticket. Or, swerte sa korte. PCSO inutusang ibigay ang 12M jackpot sa mananaya kahit sunog ang ticket. You can also actually make your own quotation headline. SC to PCSO, give 12M jackpot to better despite burn ticket. Or, SC sa PCSO, Ibigay ang 12M jackpot sa mananaya kahit sunog ang ticket. So with this activity, clearly we can we 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 learned that even if it's just one lead, you can actually come up with various types of headlines based on that lead. And um for copy readers, th this is actually the answer key in the 2017 regional schools press conference. Here it looked um, it looked like this, uh, RSPC 2017 in Central Visayas. And that wraps up, that ends our four-part lecture series in copy reading and headline writing. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time to listen to each and every part of this lecture. I hope that you learned a thing or two. And good luck and God bless to all your future endeavors as a copy reader. And see you around. Thank you.